Session Replay is yet another cool debugging tool that you can use to see how your users are using the app whenever they uh, either experience any issues or in general, for example, like 20% of the user sessions. Here's how the dashboard looks like. And you have all of the replays right here. So let's pick the first one. And basically Session Replay allows us to play back as the user used the app, including the movement of the cursor, where they clicked, the URL, how they behaved, or simply how they used the app. To get started is very easy. All you need to do is open your client config. For example, in Next.js, that's the sentry.client.config.js file. And just simply add the replay integration and configure the replays on error sample rate, which means what part of the percentage of errors should be recorded uh, and sent to Sentry, or just in general, what part of all these sessions should be recorded and sent to Sentry without necessarily having the user experiencing an error. So for example, 1.0 is 100% of the sessions. And for production, you would change this to something lower, for example, 0.2 for 20% or 0.3 for 30%, because you'll fill up your quota rather quickly if you leave it at 1.0, and you don't want that. And that's pretty much all you need to do to implement Session Replay. So let's see what it can do. So in the replay screen here, we can see that at the top, we have the current URL that the user is uh, visiting. Then we have a little preview of the user session. On the right side, we have breadcrumbs console error, and we'll go through them in a minute. And then at the lower end, we have the timeline of the whole user session. And we can see that the session took one minute and five seconds. If we hit play, we're going to see as the user used the application, how they pointed, where they pointed, where they clicked, how the URL changes as they're using the app. And of course, you can see that everything is all the private information are basically uh, hidden from us. So we're going to see, if you look at the timeline, there's a red dot, which is an issue. So a bug or an error happened during this session, and we get to see what the user did in order to trigger the error. So let's check it out. You can see that the user deleted the first input, which if we remember correctly, it was the title of the flashcard and they clicked the update button, which triggered the error. Failed to update flashcard with a certain reason. And the user is trying to click the update button again because they didn't see any confirmation whether the action was successful or not. And right here, they're trying to close the little delete popover, but the close button didn't actually close the delete popover, so they started rage clicking on the actual close button. I'm going to replay that again. There we go. There's the rage click event. And that was the session. So on the right side, we can see all of the breadcrumbs as they happen. So where what is the element that the user clicked on? What is the type? For example, here we have the rage click. Here we have just simple user clicks. There are page load or navigation uh, type of events here. And of course, issues when they happen. There we go. And issues are also linked in your Sentry dashboard. So that was the breadcrumbs uh, display or the breadcrumbs tool. If we go to the console, we're going to see the browser console window, just as if we were at the pretty much the same room as the user. And we're talking about this console. Okay, so any messages that we output through console.log or console.error, we're going to see them appear here. Next, we have the network tab, which is pretty much just like the console tab. This is the network tab of the uh, user's browser and we can see all of the requests that happened and we can click on them and see what is the URL, uh, the type, etc. Here's the request uh, data. Here's the response data, for example, let's see. Here's the put request that actually triggered the error. If we click on that, we can go and preview what the actual issue was. So this is the URL 
if we want to capture bodies, because we didn't integrate this, here's what we need to do to also capture uh, the payloads that we sent. And we're going to see what the issue was. And the issue was actually that we wanted to update the flashcards, but uh, we actually deleted the flashcard name or the flashcard title. Okay, and that was the network tab. The errors tab, on the other hand, contains a list of all of the errors that happened during this specific session. And these are linked, so if we click on them, it'll just take us to the error or the issue details page where we can see all of the specifics of this issue. Again, if we click on the replays, we're going to see all the different replays or recorded replays of users experiencing this error. So this is a really nifty way to see for a specific error what the user did to trigger them. Okay, and that was the errors. So the next window or the next tool is the trace view. This basically gives us an overview of everything that happened, just like the distributed tracing is actually the distributed tracing view uh, between the client and the server. So it's easier for us to figure out what the issue is. The next one is the accessibility, and this is still in alpha uh, at the time of recording this video. And you will get all the accessibility problems that Centric could detect uh, on the page. Then we have the memory window or the memory view where you can see how the memory, the hip size and the dumb nodes memory uh, behaved or like increased or decreased as the user went through the um, session. And at the end, we have any tags related to this session replay or this transaction. We should also have in mind that most of these windows, for example, like the trace, they also follow the actual session replay on the left. So as you can see, the line here tells us what happens and the window or the preview on the left side tells us how or the, what the user sees when these things happen. Same as the network tab, we can see the requests as they're happening. Let's go back a little bit and we'll see. There we go. You see how they happen. They get highlighted up to the point where the put 400 happens or where the actual error happens. Yeah, the way that you can access all the replays is by clicking on the replays button in the sidebar. But you can also open the issues screen and see how much session replays are recorded and stored based on the type of the error. So for example, we have failed to update flashcards to session replays for this type of error. And we can see them from the replace tab at the top. There we go, and we click on them will basically be on this screen again. So that's session replay.